Our time is short, so without further ado, I'd like to hand over to uh, Mr. Paul Riembo to give us an introduction to the reform process. Paul, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Tony. Good afternoon, welcome. Uh, so the presentation is about an example of translation of the end effectiveness principles into operational practice. And it's also about capacity development, and it was very pleasant to hear this morning heads of state speaking about capacity development. How simple is it to reform the European Commission? So you know it's a big organization, so the word reform is easier said than done. And reform is always painful when it's about handing over some control. So why reform? The good news is that the first driver of the reform was the Aid Effectiveness Agenda. Since 2005, the EC has been genuinely committed to uh, Aid Effectiveness. Then the real <laughs> bad news for the EC came in 2007 with a report on technical assistance from the European Court of Auditor. It was a very critical report and it had transformed a priority into an emergency. Where were we when we started the reform? Some quotations. Technical assistance diverges from capacity development and focuses on substitution. Well, we should not oversimplify. When there is pressure for results, substitution is a natural reflex, but it's a confusion of objectives, often for both parties, including the beneficiary or the partner country we satisfy to see the job done. EC procedures, not conducive to EU intentions on air effectiveness. That's a difficult one. It's, a more, it's more a question of mindset on how to implement the procedures. What was decided? The stated goal of the reform was to improve EU aid with respect to capacity development in two aspects, quality of technical cooperation and reduction of parallel PIUs, two aspects which are in complete harmony with aid effectiveness agenda. So how to keep how to get there? What was the change strategy? First of all, we had to change the practice. Guidance was drafted with a set of quality criteria such as ownership, harmonization, etc. And these quality criteria had to be monitored. The ambition was to translate ownership into operational practice. However, producing good guidance is not enough. And when guidance is approved, the normal bureaucrat has the feeling of the job done. So, after the change of practice, the second element was, of the strategy was the softer part, the change of mindset, which involved a, a series of measures like uh, learning events, a website, task teams from EC staff in order to create a constituency for change in the organization and reach out to EU member states. Thanks. Well, it has taken longer than expected to see change, but there are some emerging results. For example, last year about 1,000 projects went through a process of external monitoring of these five quality criteria and they were rated. So projects with a score of 10 out of 10 are the most conducive to capacity development and projects with zero, of course, the less conducive. And the attitude of the partner country also plays a role because, of course, ownership, leadership is also rated. Conclusions, there have been some progress, but 
we are not complacent. Another emerging result in the softer part of the agenda that the better than anticipated progress of the knowledge sharing platform on capacity development. That's a website capacity for dev, which is completely collaborative. It has different levels of visibility from private to completely public. It's a recognition that we are not a closed entity. We are working within vast ecosystems composed of partners, EU member states, other donors, civil society, academics, consultants. You are welcome to register. And finally, well, we can conclude that the Paris Agenda has been useful for the reform and as capacity development was taken seriously, it has allowed some adaptation of the practice and partially a change of mindset. So it is unfinished business and we should stand firm on capacity and to conclude, let me quote the famous slogan of LNCD, which is make aid history, or at least make traditional aid history and develop capacity. <laughs>